This is Jupiter, and this is Saturn. And every 20 years or so, they do something that looks like this. Well, not exactly. What is actually happening is that from our location on Earth, these planets are appearing to get closer. This is called a conjunction, and so are these. Now what you're actually seeing in the conjunction is Jupiter's orbit catching up to that of Saturn. For Jupiter, it only takes about 12 years to orbit the Sun, whereas for Saturn, it takes around 29 years. But as we know, looks can be deceiving. When I shot this video, Saturn was over 450 million miles farther away from Earth than Jupiter was. To put that into perspective, it took the Voyager 1 spacecraft over three years to get to Saturn, and it was moving it up to speeds of 38,000 miles per hour. But what made the conjunction of 2020 so great? Well, Jupiter and Saturn appear to be really close. So close, in fact, that the apparent visual distance between the two was one-fifth the diameter of a full moon. The last time Jupiter and Saturn appeared to be this close was nearly 800 years ago, back when people thought the Earth was flat and this guy was topping all the charts in Europe. Oh, and one more thing. See how the rings of Saturn appear to be wavy and going in and out of focus? That's because of atmospheric turbulence. This is especially noticeable because at the time of the conjunction, both planets were very low on the horizon, where it is more of an issue. The easiest way to account for this atmosphere is to take many, many photos. And the easiest way to do that is to take a video. This way, we can go through the individual frames of the video and select only the best ones for our final image. Saved by the bell. If you made it this far, you probably want to see that final image and maybe some B-roll footage. Let's check it out. For many people, unfortunately, their view of the Great Conjunction was obscured by clouds. Here in central Virginia, however, the skies were perfect. The moon was out, but that's no issue when you're shooting the planets because they're just so bright. I'm especially glad I got to record this historic event so that I could share it with those of you who could not experience it. What you won't immediately see when you look at a space photo is the hours of work that went into it for things like preparing the location, troubleshooting equipment, and processing the data. My uncle has been gracious enough to lend me his 10-inch mirror telescope and tracking mount. Take a look at this beauty. This setup here weighs over 100 pounds and is really fun to carry. Because of the rotation of the Earth, the tracking mount is just as important as the telescope. The telescope I used in this case has a mirror the size of a dinner plate to capture boatloads of light. Oh, and don't forget the camera. I used a regular Canon DSLR and attached it to the back of the telescope with an adapter essentially turning the telescope into a huge telephoto lens. Behind every astro image are stories, a story of all the preparation and planning, and a story of the photons that traveled millions of miles to hit your camera sensor. For those of you who didn't get a chance to see 2020's Great Conjunction, I hope in some small way my story makes up for it. I hope you get the same chance to enjoy God's creation, and I hope you enjoy this final image. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, go ahead and give it a like. Thanks again for visiting my channel. These videos take a lot of effort to make, but again, I'm hoping to make more in the future. Things like how to shoot galaxies, things like how to shoot deep sky nebulae. Uh, this channel is gonna be all about astrophotography and really how you can get involved with it too. I hope it's gonna be fun. I hope it's gonna be educational. Uh, and I hope all of us can learn a little bit more about the universe around us. Until next time, clear skies.